All right. So we are going to start with banking services. I know in your syllabus it said we weren't going to do this until next week, but I'm obviously not going to sit here and not do anything for a whole week. So this is what we are working on. All right. Um, I will try to go as slow as possible in the sense that um, I know this is probably new-ish to most of you. Um, we obviously all know what banking checking and check registers are. Maybe not everybody knows what a check register is. Um, do you all have physical actual checks? Like, is that something? I, but I barely use them. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. See, look, I have, a, I have my nice, don't steal my identity or anything else. Oh yeah, mine looks like that too, but I literally, it's in my yeah. purse for emergencies. Like I pay my son's daycare with it. Like I give them a check, but I don't really use it much, but I like to have it to have it. Yeah. Um, I have really, really anciently old landlords. So <laughs> um, it's the only way they accept our money. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, that is really the only reason that I have a checkbook, just like Sasha. I'm sure Sasha and I are probably pretty close in age so we were probably raised to be like you have to at least have a check book <laughs> like you can't just yeah, without it <laughs> um which is amusing because i do think um younger people today starting out their parents probably weren't in the same boat like they probably they probably have checkbooks as your parents but then they probably just didn't have the same like you must have this mentality as our parents did um Honestly, with the exception of my landlords, I don't think I would use a check except for maybe like when you get a new job and you need a voided check, but they're starting to go away from that too, I feel. So anyway, the check register, I never ever use, um, but basically all checkbooks have them. You can have them separate as well, but they kind of look like this. They basically are a little area where you can keep track of what you're spending. I just have it all in my head. Sometimes I think my bank hates me for that because they're like, how can you possibly know everything you're spending? But obviously it's my money. So I clearly understand what's going in and out. Okay, so these are our bank objectives for today. Um, we're going to attempt to understand banks and re recent trends. We're gonna look at checking accounts and checks. We're going to calculate the monthly service charges, identify the parts of a deposit slip, identify parts of a checking stub, and complete the parts of a check register. Again, um, <clears throat> if we don't cover everything this week, that's fine because we're a week ahead. So, uh, and trust me, I'd rather us continue to work like this than to have to be like feeling the pressure of trying to catch up or anything. Okay. Um, so banks are clearly very important to our economy. I'm not going to read all of this to you guys. You can read it later if you want. It's up on Canvas and obviously it'll be on the uh, YouTube video. Banks earn revenue by cha charging interest on loans and charging fees such as monthly account fees, low balance fees, and return check fees. Um, Basically, anything they can think of, they will throw a fee onto it. Here's what you need to know about banks when you walk in. If you are going to get a new bank account, um, you just pretty much have to tell them straight up, like, what are your options that do not come with fees? Because they do exist. It's just not like they're going to just hand that to you on a silver platter. They're not going to be like, here, you want this checking option because it doesn't come with any fees. They're going to clearly give you the one that has all these little hidden fees with it. Um, you literally just need to be a smart consumer. Um, so you need to walk in and say, okay, so what are your account options that have the least amount of fees attached and what are those fees? So when I, um, when I opened up like when I went in and, in and started talking about things, um, I initially had gotten charges because I was switching money back and forth too 
too often between my savings and my checking. Um, and I lost my ever loving mind on them. That happened to me too. They yeah. actually closed my savings because I moved money too much. I was like, what the hell? That's yeah. All right. So <laughs> apparently, yeah, apparently there's this thing where if you, um, I want to say it's, well, each bank is going to be different and each account is clearly going to be different. But for my bank, it was like, if you transferred money into your savings, they didn't, they never cared. But if you transferred money out of your savings and it was like six times in a month or something, um, then they charged me and I lost my mind. I was like, it's literally my money. I don't understand how you can tell me where I can put it and when I can put it somewhere. Um, That's what happened to me. They charged me $12. Yeah, I made them give it back. <laughs> I was so, so cranky mad about it. Um, so obviously when I switched some things around, I pretty much told them, okay, so what, what accounts do I need to have so that that doesn't happen again? And sometimes they basically do it where um, if you, if you're going to kind of need that back and forth, they'll suggest doing two checkings instead of a checking and a saving. Um, the funniest part to me was that when they charged me the money, they tried to say that it's because they gave me interest on what was in the savings. My interest had totaled like six cents. I was going to say like nine cents. <laughs> right. So, um, so yeah, they didn't really have too much room to stand on. I flipped massive crap and. I can't remember if they gave it back or not, but I, I definitely told them how much I did not care for their services. So, um, yeah, it's really important to understand what your, what your bank actually is offering you and what they'll try to do if you're not really paying attention. Um, I can tell you that all that kind of stuff happened more when I was a little bit younger and I was living kind of more of those jobs where it was like, you're going paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> and it's not really the, the, what you kind of want all the time for your life. But, you know, sometimes you have to go that way. Um, banks are really more for people that just have money, period. Like if you have a lot of money or if you have a decent amount of money, um, banks pretty much aren't going to take you off because, they're not really going to mess with you too much. You have enough money in all your accounts that they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. You're, you're fine. You're making us money. We're not going to take money from you. So, um, I know it kind of sucks, but that's, that's the way I kind of see it. And that's just been my life experiences. Um, there are crowdsourcing funding firms, and I know you guys have heard of these. Um, the GoFundMe is probably one of the more popular ones. Um, I mean, I, I've i seen some decently okay, like reasons. I don't really kind of understand them that much. And I definitely don't put my money into them. Um, I'm kind of more of a person where if I see someone is suffering from cancer and they put up a GoFundMe, I'd rather send them a, a card with cash in it or a card with something, you know, something in it and at least they know that I actually care but I don't really I don't really like the GoFundMes um there have been so many like phishing things attached to GoFundMes that I just maybe that's just wrong of me and I should just kind of accept it as is but GoFundMe charges you money when you do that they take a percentage of the money you earn I think that's messed up wow that's insane. Yeah. I actually, I didn't know that. I did know. It's crazy. You're supposed to be helping people, but they make money off of it. Wow. That and is you know, that's like a good pump too. Cause, um, um, like two years ago, my grandfather died and my sister has a Facebook. I don't. So she did one and it was just like 1500 and they took $300 from the 1500. Wow. So, yeah. They take a good chunk out of it. It's <laughs> That's nuts. I know that there was a guy I used to um, work with at a summer camp and he decided to basically take off work, 
I don't know how long, and he wanted to hike the Appalachian Trail. So he did a GoFundMe, like, like while hiking the trail. And I, I kind of lost my mind. I was like, I'm sorry, but we're all here, like working for jobs to try and make our bills. And this dude thinks that we can then just throw him some money because he wants to take off and just hike the Appalachian Trail. Like, or that's insane. <laughs> like, go I to know. work. <laughs> my, my one buddy had to put a, like his dad put up a GoFundMe because on New Year's Eve, he crashed a motorcycle into a tree and he like broke his vertebrae or whatever and like his wrists and stuff. And they, I don't know how much he made in total, but I know they took like about 500 bucks from him. From that's the- insane. Um, that's just like, um, I don't, I don't even know. Like, I, no. So, all right. You guys are really just um, reinforcing the fact that I will never, ever do a GoFundMe for any reasons. Um, all right. So banks have, are obviously constantly developing things. I, I'm sure much like myself, you guys all have your mobile banking app. Um, let me tell you that speaking from an older older ish person's perspective those things are a lot better now than they were when they were originally like getting worked on so they dropped the launch for the pnc mobile banking app which there you go it's not a surprise that's what i use um and as it was in development i cannot tell you how many times i like obviously because i was younger so i wasn't paying attention to my money as much and i also didn't have as much money (laughs) So I'd constantly be like, oh crap, can I get gas or not? Um, That thing was so glitchy and you could be anywhere and it would just like decide that they were doing some kind of ridiculous update. Um, So I am so thankful to have it now and somehow not having been cranky enough to just, I don't know, put all my money in a mattress or something. But um, so the... (sighs) Banks are pretty much irritating. That's all I can pretty much tell you guys on the on the introduction front. Um, we're going to learn a lot of ridiculous stuff that I don't know if any of you are thinking about going into banking. Um, I kind of hope maybe somebody is. So, I mean, I really don't want to like trash like the people who work at banks. They're all decently cool, I guess. Um, my mom worked at a bank for like a really long time. So I just think banks themselves don't have any other way of existing except to be kind of, kind of rude. Um, They always put like cost on things. So like something I thought was interesting when I was reading through your textbook is apparently banks can put costs on like transactions, but I think that's more on the business side of things. So like businesses that have a transaction, you know, sometimes they have those little like I don't know, index cards up near like uh, the credit credit machine or the debit card machine, like at gas stations and stuff. And it's like, do you, it's almost saying like, do you really want to use your card? Like, could you maybe give us cash? And I think the reason for that is, is because they get dinged like so many cents per transaction on their side. Like it doesn't come out of our money. It comes out of the money from the business. And the reasoning is, is that the bank says, well, um, let's say for every 100 debit card swipes or 125 debit card swipes, we're going to take like uh, 10 cents or whatever it is. So like on the, on the face value, the business is like, I don't care. I want my customers to be, to be able to use credit cards and debit cards and whatever. But like when you realize how many people in the population never carry cash, it kind of adds up really quickly. So we're definitely going to have um, some problems that you're going to see later where you're going to kind of be thinking, where is this transaction coming from and why is there a cost to it? And then you kind of have to put yourself in the business person's shoes. Um, because when I was doing these problems, I was like, I've never been like, I've never gotten a transaction fee except from like credit card companies because they really suck wait till we get to those. I don't, I don't even know if we're going to get to, to those, but if we have any extra time at the end of the semester, we will definitely be bashing credit card companies because I will just show you how absolutely terrible they are. All right. 
Um, automated teller machines, in case you didn't know, that is the real name for an ATM. Um, it's something that I did know, but relearned um, this semester because it's just so funny. Like you, ATM, that's, you hear that a, like a thousand times in your life and you, no one really ever tells you that that's what it stands for, but that's what it stands for. Um, and we all pretty much know what it does. You stick your card in, you get your money out. Pretty simple. Um, there, I, I wouldn't say that every machine is something I would trust. There are a lot of, you know, cases out there where hackers have pretty much found a way to kind of put those little devices in and then they steal everyone's identity. Okay, awesome. Um, not so much. So I don't know. Me, I try to just use the ones that are kind of in safer locations. Um, I don't really use an ATM that's like in the middle of nowhere where there's absolutely no one like kind of monitoring it. I mean, you guys can do what you want, but I also don't carry a lot of cash on me like ever. Um, I pretty much only carry cash if I'm getting a tattoo. That's it. <laughs> no other times do I feel like I need the money. All right. Um, so a debit card, again, I apologize because some of this stuff is just information that you guys clearly know. Um, the majority of debit cards are going to require a PIN, which is a personal identification number. Um, the difference between the debit card and the credit card, of course, is that most credit cards require a signature and not the PIN, okay? Um, direct deposit, direct payment. I'm going to assume that the vast majority of you who have had jobs, that is the only way you've gotten paid. There are some small companies out there that still send us checks, but the majority of the time, they like to just put it right into your account. Um, you know, no fuss, just plop it in and, and that's about it. When I was uh, working at uh, Home Depot, they literally made me get a debit card because I didn't have one before. And then they were like, well, that's the only way we're going to pay you is if it's direct deposit. And I was like, you can't just give me a check like normal. Like, yes. I will also tell you another company. So if when you do that, so when you do that for Home Depot, Lowe's, um, a big one is like Red Lobster. Red Lobster loves to make you get those little whatever cards. Um, and, they're, and they're literally payment cards. When you get those, you, I, I'm strongly advising you to go in and there is a way to set it up so that when you go from that payment card, it can drop into your payment card and then immediately transfer to your bank account. Okay, you have, go ahead. Are you talking about the money network card? Yeah, whatever, there, there are so many out there. Listen, so I will tell you all, and I don't really care about sidetracking because like I said, we're ahead. Um, the absolute worst birthday I've ever had, my birthday is five days before Christmas, okay? I was 20, 21, something like that. And I had been working my butt off at Red Lobster. So I was going to school full-time and I was working almost full-time hours at Red Lobster doing gross, disgusting things. I would come home smelling like a freaking seafood grossness and have to take like five showers just to smell normal again. Um, I worked my butt off and I was like, you know what? I have a little bit of money. Don't have a lot, but I have a little bit of money. I had not touched the money on that card the entire time I worked. So the entire time I worked from like, from when I got hired in, you know, January, February until December, I had not touched that card. So I was dumb. I thought I was being nice and cute. And I bought my family's Christmas presents on a school computer with that card. I had had the card set up. Like you, you guys can chuckle now, but let me just tell you, I broke down and cried. I had that card set up so that it would tell me when I had like, uh, either 10, five or $0 on it. Cause I, the only thing I really used it for was to get gas. And obviously at that time, you know, 
that's still enough for me to get gas, but I can still kind of be like, oh crap, I need to bum some money for my parents so I can get back and forth to work. So my card never got that notification, like ever. The day I hit, it hit midnight for my birthday. I got the notification and I was like, what are they talking about? So I went online and I also called them at the same time and somebody out in freaking Michigan got my card number and went to all these freaking shops and they went to like freaking nail salons, hair places, electronic stores, all my money was gone. All of it was gone. And they were like, so I called them and they're like, oh, we're so sorry, um, but your money's been promised to these vendors. And I was like, I am telling you that I've never even freaking been in Michigan. So you're going to stop the payments and you're going to give me my money back. And let's just say that this is a college class. And if we were not being recorded, I would tell you guys what else I said. But I'm, you know, obviously don't want to go that far. So I'm in tears. They're telling me there's nothing they can do. And so finally I lost my mind and I said, well, listen, if you know who the vendors are, then you can give me that information and I will call them and I will explain that I obviously was not in their store because I'm gonna tell you that this fat Italian did not go to that place. It did not happen. It did not happen. So I lost my mind. I think for about two weeks, I had nothing but dreams about me being in the FBI, roly poly oly and blasting some people up. I was so so mad, so bad. I woke my mom up at like 2 a.m. just bawling and she is like, what are you doing? And I was like, my money is all God. It's all God. And she's like, listen, you're crazy right now. You need to go to sleep. You need to find some way to calm down. I don't care what you do, but it is 2 a.m. You can talk to me at seven. I was like, I'm not talking to anybody anymore. Like I'm done. I hate the world. Everybody sucks. So if for nothing else, learn from my mistake. If you have to get one of those horrible cards, you tell your employer, okay, I'll do this. And then you call that company and you say, listen, the only thing this card does is it's like a pinging system. It's going to drop that cash. And as soon as it hits here, it's going to my account. Because let me tell you, if for nothing else, banks, you can at least write a, um, a claim or whatever, and they, banks will stop a payment. These little card service companies, they will not. They will not stop a payment. It took me four months to get my money back, even though they already had it. They already had it in their possession. They just wouldn't stop the transaction. Oh my goodness, I thought I was going to kill some people. Dead serious. So um, that's my little side story. I tell it quite a lot when I'm not in the right state of mind because I get very heated and upset about it. But so yes, as soon as people mention those cards to me, that is the only advice I have to you. Never actually truly use it. Never put it, never give it to a freaking place for your, don't even use it for gas like I did. Don't even keep your money on it. None of it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. So um, that's our little side story for direct deposit. Always better than those stupid little cards. Um, this e-commerce, that's just buying and selling products and services over the internet. Okay. I mean, I feel like at this point that is, that is almost recorded into your guys' DNA. Um, online banking. Again, mobile ticketing, uh, process of purchasing tickets using, oh, so there's just like if you wanted to buy, I don't know, um, when COVID decides to stop ruining everyone's lives and we can have events again, if you chose to buy your event online, the only, um, the only caveat I will give you to online ticketing is I feel like it's a lot easier to buy scalped tickets online and I would be a lot more scared to show up and be like, here's my ticket. I bought it online. And then somebody tell me I can't go into the event. I'd be so mad. All right. Prepaid card. Obviously, you know, we all know that what that is. We get them for like our teenagers and we're like, here you go. You're special. Now you have $50. Don't blow it all in one place. So whatever. Um, 
service fees like we said everything is attached to a freaking fee at the bank uh smart card uh, so these smart cards, they're basically what we all have now anyway. They're the ones with the microchip. Um, you don't really have a choice in having them anymore. They're pretty much all, um, that is what our cards are these days. So. All right, um, point of sale, that's just the time and place where the sale is made at the retail store. So point of sale right now is really, really weird with Amazon. Amazon has now decided to do this thing where they're not charging you until they get the scan for the delivery. So if you've ordered something, it'll, it'll show up pending for like a hot second on your account and then basically what happens is Amazon kind of runs that, shows that, you know, you didn't rip them off by giving them a fake card. And then they don't take the money, though, until you've received your item. And I believe they are doing that for a couple of reasons. Um, obviously, with COVID, we've had some pretty ridiculous postal issues. Um so basically, if they wait to take your money and you never get your item, then they obviously don't have to do a return for you. Like, you know, it just kind of blankets out. Um, but I mean, overall, returns have been just ridiculous uh, with Amazon. It's like, I used to, like, preach Amazon left and right, and I, I just, I, it's just a necessary evil at this point. All right, so identity theft. Um, I mean, any of you who was, you know, who watches the same kind of shows I do, we've all heard of identity theft basically occurs when someone gathers enough information about you that they can fraudulently establish cards or borrow money using your name and personal information. Um, identity theft is, is something that you probably all want to be careful with if you've ever been kind of silly like me and you think you're with the person you're supposed to be with forever. Yeah, don't give out your social until you really truly know. Because let me just tell you that although my identity has never been stolen, I've had massive anxiety going, oh my goodness, I just left this terrible relationship and wow, hmm. And then you breathe into a bag for like two weeks until you realize that thankfully nothing has worked and their memory is just total crap. Great. Okay. So um, definitely something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. Obviously, if you found your perfect someone, clearly you would know who would be doing the identity theft if, uh, if something did happen and, you know, you'd probably just yell a lot. I can tell you that there have been cases where spouses have committed identity theft on their spouse obviously not wishing that on anyone but i'm just saying just kind of be careful um that's obviously a conversation you would want to have with them if, if that were to happen um it is very difficult to stop the theft uh, since it is difficult to find the person who sometimes has done it um, a perfect, kind of not perfect example, but probably an example that you all have heard of, um, the, the, like the whole fishing scheme of like the prince of whatever Arabia and they're like, oh, well, you're our long lost whoever. Um, yeah, that's absurd. Obviously don't do anything that they would ask you in that email or letter. Um, I think I've told you guys before that sometimes I'm my, my mom's IT. Uh, my mom called me and said that she got, it was either a text or an email. Sometimes she says those are the same things. So you never really know what she's talking about there. But uh, she said she got a text or an email and it was from Netflix. Uh, so she, she listened to it. And my mom is so 
ridiculous with changing her Netflix account. Like not, not like the email, but like the password, like my, my siblings and I all freaking hate it. We'll get like a text every other month that says, here's our new information. And we're like, oh my God, like, can you please, can you please not? And it's just because like, she'll get this little update that says somebody in this state logged into your Netflix. And it's because my sister has decided to use it at someone else's house whatever. Um, So my mom gets super paranoid about it. So my mom sent me the forward of this Netflix, supposed Netflix request. They didn't even spell Netflix correctly. There was like a typo in the word Netflix and my sister and I lost my mind on her. (laughs) Like not in a super mean way. We were like, it's fine. We're just going to change it again. (laughs) So we'll change it twice. Um, But yeah, so sometimes phishing schemes are getting, especially I have found like during quarantine, I feel like hackers just had way too much time on their hands. So they're like, oh, we're just going to make up this stuff. And people are home dealing with Netflix and Hulu and whatever. So like they'll fall into this trap. It's ridiculous. So just be careful with your information. Um, If you're... (sighs) I mean, obviously, if you're working at home, you can, you know, log in with your IDs and password and, you know, your home should be safe and secure. But I mean, if you're, if you're at work, um, like I obviously have my, my laptop at work. So my laptop is my device. No one else really gets on it. So it has all my logins and passwords and IDs. Um, But if I had a different work laptop, I obviously would not log into my bank account on my work laptop. Okay. And if you do, there's like that little thing that says, do you want to remember? Never click it if it's not your device. In fact, sometimes it asks you that on your mobile mobile app, and that's because you're on somebody else's Wi-Fi. So just be careful about certain things. Hopefully none of you guys have really scary and or looking back after 15 years, slightly funny, horrible, your money is gone stories. Um, okay. Understanding checking accounts and checks. We obviously have different checking accounts for different things. Um, individuals clearly have checking accounts or else I wouldn't be able to pay my landlords. Um, businesses also have checking accounts and, um, there are basically two different types. Clearly the personal checking account. Um, when it says small amounts of interest over time, it is very, very small. Um, the majority of most personal checking accounts, you probably have to get up to, I would say, $10,000 in it minimum, um, for you to see any kind of interest. So the difference between a checking account and a savings account is a savings account, you're going to get like... As Sasha and I said, those seven or nine or six cents, you're going to get that immediately. And they they kind of, um, they have a formula where they figure out what that interest rate is and what that amount of cents are. Um, I say cents because I'm assuming that the majority of us, including myself, are only seeing cents. Okay. If you're seeing whole dollars, well, then good for you. I'm very proud of all of you. Um most personal checking accounts though, you're not gonna get an interest rate. It's just not gonna happen. Like it might be there, but the it's very hard to obtain. Um, business checking accounts, um, they tend to receive more services and they have a greater activity, activity than personal accounts. Um, so then they might get a little bit of different stuff on it than we would as a human by ourselves. Okay. Um, knowing parts of the check. So depending upon your actual check, uh, it could be a little bit set up a little bit different. Um, things that pretty much don't change. This is your name and address at the upper left, just like with a, um, with a letter, you know, so your address is up, up to the left. Um, you have your date. This right here is your check number. 
You also have a bank and federal reserve district number. Huh. Yes, you do. It's just very small. Um, you have the payee, which is who you're paying it for. So like for my landlords, I put their name there. You have the numerical amount. And then this is the part that I hate about checks so much. You have to write out in words the numerical amount. It's very dumb. It's very stupid. Um, the memo, I use that all the time because I never want my landlords to say that I didn't pay whatever month. So I always put down the date, like the month and that it's for my rent. And then you have to sign it. These numbers down at the bottom are your bank number, your account number. Again, you'll see the check number and those should match um, slightly. So like there's a three in the front of this one. That's just because it's their third checkbook, um, but it's the 58th check in the series. And then uh, when a check is processed, they'll have the amount here, but you won't see that. You won't see that amount. That would be after they put it through like an electronic process. All right, any questions on a check? Because I'm assuming that, that maybe some of you might not have had to do checks as much as the rest of us. So if you have any questions with how to do a check, let me know. We can discuss that. Okay. Um, if you need to see that again, it'll obviously be on the video later. Calculating monthly service charge. Um, this will make more sense when we get to a flipping example, though I don't know why we haven't gotten to one yet. Um, so basically there's a maintenance charge per month and a per debt charge. This again is more for businesses. You are not gonna see that nearly as much. A typical bank charge, so here's your balance. And then here's this maintenance charge per month. And then we also have a, a per charge, per check charge. Again, I'm telling you guys, this is more for businesses um, because I wanted, to, I wanted to prove that to myself. So like, I'm not getting this maintenance charge fee in my bank. Like I've already checked, I'm not getting that. I don't have a per check charge, it doesn't happen. But notice here how the more money the business has in the bank, they don't have to worry about anything. And I can tell you right now, I don't have $5,000 in my checking. So I know for sure this is not, this is not for, for the um, average person. This is for a business. But this typical bank charges, uh, you can write it down. You will see it in your homework. So let me know whoever's writing it down when you're good and I'll move off of it. All right. Um, so basically all this is telling us is that if the business has less than 500 in their account, their account's gonna be charged $12 a month plus 20 cents per check. And then it kind of titrates depending upon the money amount. Here's something I don't kind of understand. And it's not really a mathy don't understand. It's more of a, a philosophical don't understand. I don't understand why we are charging the poorer businesses more money. Like, I feel like that's kind of backwards. Obviously, if you're more, a more successful business, you can pay a bigger fee. I don't really understand how this is so much like motivation because obviously all businesses want to be successful. So 
they clearly would want to be in the 5,000 or more category, but I just don't understand why they're getting charged more if they're not as success successful. So I don't know. It's just kind of annoying to me. All right. So here we finally have an example. Um, it says, find the monthly service charge for the following business accounts. Omni Computer, um, they write 38 written, 38 checks written, average balance of $983. Here we can see that um, based on the average balance of 983, the maintenance charge is 750 and the per check charge is 20 cents. Do you guys see where they got that from? I want to make sure that you guys know how they found this because you'll have to find it too. And I want you to know how they did it. So they're telling you the average balance in the in the checking is $983. So if we go back to our maintenance breakdown here, 983 is going to fall in the second category. So that's where they're getting the 70, 750 per month charge and the 20 cents per check, okay? So then all they're doing here is since they're finding just the monthly service charge, they're taking the maintenance charge, with the, which is the 750, and then they're taking the 20 cents times the 38 written checks, and then they're just adding it together. Okay. When you guys get to that in your homework, it'll be, you'll, you'll be fine with it. I will tell you that um, since I've already done the homework ahead of you guys, I will straight up tell you, if you get frustrated or if it's late and you're getting a problem wrong, Literally, I know this is the oldest like uh, suggestion or recommendation or whatever advice in the book, but just walk away from it. Go watch TV for like two hours or literally go to sleep, whatever you want to do. Come back to it fresh. I will, I am telling you, you will be fine once you do that. There were a couple of problems that I literally was just, I just transposed the, the sense and I was so mad. But, um, but that was the only problem. So it happened a couple of times. Definitely take my mom's advice and step away from it. Come back to it later. Okay. All right, so this is another one. Um, it says Jameson Auto Repair has 62 written checks, average balance is 4,632.25. So based on this, we're looking at the $5 category with 10 cents per check. So then if you multiply and then add those together, you're looking at a, a monthly charge of $11.20. So you guys can see that the charges aren't really that bad, even if you are at the lower range, but I just don't really understand why they're necessary anyway. I mean, the banks are doing the same thing they are for us. It's not like it's really that difficult. I don't see why they need to really do so many different things that, it, that they have to constantly be making money. It's kind of ridiculous. I have a question. Sure. Um, is the percent or per check charge always going to be told in the question? No. Or are we going to have to know that chart? Yeah. So that's why I told you to write the chart down. Oh, okay. um, you will need to know. You'll need to know the chart. Um, but the chart is sometimes given to you. So like, I don't know if it's given in every single problem, but it might be given in say like five out of the eight problems. Um, and if it doesn't give it to you, but it says using like the maintenance charges, then you wanna go based off of the, the typical one that I gave you. Um, if it, it has a different one, then it will give you that, that different breakdown. 
Um, so this is identifying par parts of a deposit slip. Here's what's kind of really nice about banks these days. Um, they pretty much assume that someone doesn't know how to fill these out. So if you go in and you want to give money into your bank account, um, and it's in the forms of, say, checks, cash, whatever, if you pick up the deposit slip or if you just go to the teller and you say, I want to deposit this, she or he will fill it out for you. Um, so it's pretty sad, but I mean, I do the same thing because I'm like, I don't want to fill this out. They will do it. Um, and they do. But if you were to do your own deposit check, and I mean, I guess for businesses, they kind of have to, because that's obviously a lot more cash than we would have. Um, so you put your name and your address here. If you're doing it at the bank, you don't have to fill that part out. Um, they kind of have their own little thing there. It's fine. You basically just have to give them your ID. Um, they put the date, they have you sign it. They split up the uh, deposits here. So if you have cash, they'll put the cash on top first with the, the value of the bills and the coins. And then the, if there's checks, then they'll split up the checks and then they have a grand total. And then they, they also write down the cash received and then the actual deposit amount. Again, they have, if you're using your own deposit slip, it'll have your account number. Um, if you're using a generic one, they fill it in. Okay. All right. Okay, so the restricted endorsement, um, I'm sure some of you have probably gotten, um, oops, checks for like Christmas, birthday, whatever, probably from grandparents who still use checks. And on the back of them, you have to endorse it. So it used to be when you endorse the check, you would just sign your signature. Now you have, now they even have the little spots where it says mobile deposit and you can just do a checkbox and then sign it. Um, I was raised to always write for deposit only on the back or deposit only and then sign my name. Um, a blank endorsement, I, I mean, I, the, these special and blank endorsements, those are like if you wanted to give your check that was given to you to someone else instead of putting it in the bank. Um, I don't recommend doing it. I think it's kind of ridiculous. I'd rather just cash the check and give them cash or give, you know, give them your own check, whatever. Um, here's some... This blank endorsement is what we used to do way back in the day before we even wrote down for deposit only. Um, this restricted endorsement, that's saying um, that, that it's for deposit only. Theirs is more ridiculous because they have the bank, um, they have the name and the account number. So they're actually putting that into someone else's checking account, okay? That's why they have all that information. And then this special endorsement is she's signing this over to a company. Again, like I said, I wouldn't do this. I would just give them my own freaking check. Like I wouldn't bother giving them a check that already existed, but was for me. I wouldn't do it that way. All right. Any questions on, on that, on what we've covered so far? Okay. Um, so this processing information, this is basically what the back of the check looks like. If you don't believe me, you can try to find one and look at it yourself. Um, this information is obviously not on it. It'll just have the federal reserve thing. 
So this is saying that the date that the bank de debited or deducted the payer's amount, that would, so if you saw a check that was already processed, this is the information you would see. We very rarely ever see this information unless you were to go to the bank and request an old check and look at it. But um, honestly, I don't know anyone that would do that. Maybe if they were trying to figure something out with their taxes, but again, I don't see how having one check would really help you with that. I guess maybe for like child support, you can maybe prove that you did or didn't get your child support by doing that. Um, the check stubs keep information about each check that was written on it. My checkbook does not have um, a check stub. My mine has the thing in the back that I showed you guys that has like a way of keeping track of the step of the um, of stuff, but it doesn't actually have like the the like I don't know X-ray kind of paper, whatever the crap that was called, like where you wrote on it, and then there was like so many different copies underneath. Um, mine doesn't have that anymore. So okay. Um, this is another example. So they're telling you that check number 2724 was made out on June 8th to a Lil Burn Utilities as payment for water and power. Huh, that's kind of funny because Lily's like water and burn is power. Okay, whatever. All right. Um, assume that the check was for $182.15 that the balance brought forth is 4,245 and 36 cents and that the deposits are made, they're there, they give them to you uh, since the check was last written. An electronic payment is also entered and they want us to complete the check stub. So my suggestion to practice this would be to see like Google a, check stub and then kind of print that out but we're just going to practice it based on this so they filled out the top information june 8th the amount of the check going to the utilities and then they also filled out the memo um the balance from the end of the previous stub that was given to you the sum of deposits made last they added those they're subtracting this check and then they also have to subtract other credits or debits from the account. So if you go back, it said that an electronic payment was made to this James Carpenter, which is amusing. I think that is a writer or a director, somebody. And then the current balance goes next to the stub. So they added and subtracted as they needed to, and then they got the current balance. You will have to do this agnoseatingly in your homework. I am only know that because I've already done it. So when you get kind of sick of doing it, just remember I've already been there. <laughs> so you can ask for help and guidance, but you can do it. I have faith and trust, but I don't have any pixie dust. All right, check register. Although a few people have used check stubs to keep track of funds, most use check registers, also called transaction registers, which can be used on paper or credit created using computer software. So like QuickBooks, QuickBooks is a fairly um, popular service that uses registers. The check register is used to keep track of all transactions, including deposits, checks, ATM withdrawals, refunds, and electronic deposits or payments. Update the balance by subtracting the account of the withdrawal or adding the amount of deposit credit as you go from there. Uh, one line to the next. So here's the only thing I can tell you about the mobile apps. They love to tell you what's pending going out and what's pending coming in. And then they give you the actual um, balance and then they give you the ledger balance. They do all of that to kind of protect themselves because if they just gave you what you kind of have using that deposit and, and outgoing system, then you could potentially overdraw because you would think you had more money than you actually had at that point. So it's another reason for why you should just kind of know your money inside your head and 
you know, only be kind of referencing your account, um, mobile account than actually, you know, keeping it as your only source of, of understanding. All right. Here is an example of a sample check register. Um, these things can not, they don't really get complicated or complex, but they're a bit of a headache, especially when you're learning how to do them. So my only advice to you is practice, practice, practice. Um, and if you can get them on the first try, then give yourselves a pat on the back. Uh, you've done better than I have. Um, I will obviously help any of you that needs help with them, but really some of it just comes down to, um, you know, having the patience to add everything you need to add, subtract everything you need to subtract. Don't go dyslexic on the numbers, which I know can cause some frustration. Trust me, it did for me. Um, I will tell you though, that anytime I tried to do it differently than the recommended, I always got it wrong. If I followed their recommended steps and I added everything that needed to be added and I, then I added everything that needs to be subtracted, I got it right every single time. So follow an example that they're giving you and then do it the way the example says to. Don't be pigheaded like me and try to do it a different way because it just ends up not working. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. It just gets very annoying. Okay, that is the end of 5.1. Um, do you, think, don't, do you yeah. think you could go show me that, cart, that chart one more time? Sure. Thank you. Can you see, still see it on the screen or? No. Uh, no, it's gone. Okay, give me a second. Do, 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 do. There you go. 